you rarely see what just happened to the Dolphins, which is the tide has totally turned on Mike McDaniel in two games because of how bad they look, because of how good he made them look before that. It's totally changed. Right. Like the, the way the noise has gotten now, because what Tony was saying is so, that I'm still breathless. <laughs> that, off, that offense, what we saw from Tua, who we thought might be average, I mean, mm-hmm. was that he led the league in passing. And rare is the time where you see something happen like that from average to leads the league in passing. I don't understand how that happened. It must be the coach. It must be the coach who has fixed everything there. And then as soon as Tua leaves, the coach loses all of his genius because he cannot do it with, with anybody. With, well, he can't do it with Skylar Thompson, who we all agree isn't good enough yes, to but be a, we would have, a QB1. But we, we would have all agreed when Brock Purdy was drafted, he's not good enough to be QB1 either. Unless Brock Purdy was good, and we just didn't know it. Right? Sure, he's good. But again, it's the scheme, it's the players, it's the offensive line, it's the it's the playing complimentary football with the defense who's best in the mm-hmm. league. Like it's very easy to kind of step in and just play point guard when you have everything. It's like playing quarterback at Alabama. Yeah, I've got a guy who's seventeen years old who's gonna lead the, the NCAA in receiving. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Here's another discussion to have because we had this Chris before the season started. Why not sign Ryan Tannehill? Right? And everyone was like, well, Ryan Tannehill wants to start. We're like, well, clearly on day one, he's not going to start anywhere. 32 teams have their quarterbacks. But if I were Ryan Tannehill, the team I would pick is the one with the quarterback who has a history of getting knocked out. And that this place was the perfect place. And to me, if Ryan Tannehill were here right now to have stepped in and went to camp and did all the reps and everything, and now he steps in, are we having this conversation? Maybe because there have been other injuries. Maybe because, again, we had uh, – some losses in the offensive line over the offseason. He'd be more likely to look at least like Mason Rudolph. Yes. Not, not great, but oh, the competent. Right. That's sort of my point is that, like, it's – it. Should they should still be able to beat the Titans at home on Monday night against the Titans' backup quarterback, too. But at the same time, like, it's hard to sign a quarterback that's been – around for like a week and put him in and start him so that is it's bad planning which is why I don't think it's all on McDaniel because they didn't have a great backup plan if there was an injury to Tua and that sort of shows when you lose with your third string quarterback to a second string quarterback on Monday night which again Jessica hammers home the point like you knew who your QB1 was you didn't get Iron Man there they knew who that guy was and to say ah we'll be fine it's kind of ridiculous I don't know if Dan said Somebody else had said it, um, but Mike McDaniel didn't look like he changed any of the offense when Snoop Huntley, Dominique said it, okay. So he didn't change the offense whatsoever. And you have a guy coming in off the street who's a good quarterback, right? Played well after Lamar Jackson got hurt, made a Pro Bowl, you know, uh, asterisk, whatever, not the point. The point is he's a competent quarterback and a good quarterback who can play in the NFL, and he looked incompetent. Looking at the other side of the ball, the Titans have a sneaky, really good defense. Right, so it's it's kind of a push and pull of McDaniel should have changed the offensive scheme, but he was playing a good defense. Well, I would say this though, I will say it. Uh, the thing that McDaniel is being compared against is Malik Willis played for Green Bay, and Lafleur did change all the things that needed to be changed so that Malik Willis, who none of us have seen play well before, didn't look like Skylar Thompson didn't look like Huntley when we were watching the game. And as all these new whiz kids come rushing through here, as you find all of these Shanahan's and the Shanahan disciples who are doing things, admittedly, that most of us, I'm going to say more than 99.5% of us who are watching on Sundays don't actually understand what these human beings know that we don't know when they're offensive geniuses. The other guys that McDaniel is compared to don't look like that while I'm watching Sam Darnold all of a sudden look like somebody that I don't recognize. And so that's what he's being compared against. It's just rare to see it all evaporate in two games. It's super weird to see this cascade down on the head of Mike McDaniel because it's not merely that you're losing. That's one thing. It's that you're watching the coach on the sideline, comparing it to what you're seeing on the field, and you're saying, that's not competent. 
What's happening out there when they go down 15 to 6? That game is over. There will be no coming back here from a team that two weeks ago, if you told me they were down 21 points, I'd be like, that's all right. They can figure that out. They've been good at coming back. They know how to do that. To go from that if you're down 14 points, I trust you, to I don't believe that you can come down from 15 to 6 because your coach has nothing, it's pretty rare to see that happen, that quote-unquote genius evaporate in two weeks. Can we give it one more week? Like Tyler Huntley was just signed. Mm-hmm. Skyler Thompson's clearly a terrible quarterback. <laughs> Huntley just fit yeah. into to, to one week of game planning. If he goes a second week as a skilled guy with no adjustments to the offense and those types of struggles – then I'm willing to jump off. But can we just give it one more week before we totally abandon him? I guess my big issue with everything that is being said is it seems like the standard for whether you're a good coach or not is can you win with an ass quarterback? That That's what, like, it's like, hey, it's all good to win when you got talent. I mean, that's Belichick's oh, entire Mike Tomlin genius. has done it for the last five yeah. years. That's his specialty. Belshazzar, Babylonian king, according to Wikipedia. Wow.